What's up everyone? Welcome to the first video of what size. I see a lot of people struggling with finding the right pace in their interval training. In this video, I will show you how to pace. All right, so here I am at CrossFit Kreis 9. It's my home gym in Switzerland, in Zurich. Uh, if you ever happen to be in town, uh, please come by for a drop-in. So what will I do? I will do two times four minutes of interval training with two minutes break in between those intervals and then 30 minutes break between the first two intervals and the latter two intervals. First I will do the first two intervals at a pace above my ventilatory threshold. So a pace that is actually too high for my aerobic capacity. I will measure this with lactate as well as muscle oxygenation. I will explain you in a second how that works. Then I will have a 30 minutes rest as, as discussed and then I will do the intervals exactly at my ventilatory threshold. So the right pace for interval training, let's say. And how do I know my exact threshold, right? So that's always the key. So what I did before was a 20 minute all out test, let's say a, a time trial on the rower, where I tried to produce as many watts as possible for 20 minutes straight. In this case, for me, it was 235 watts. And of, the, the, of that number, I take 90% and that would be my threshold or my functional uh, threshold power, FTP. And it's going from that, I will go, as I said, in the first two intervals too high, and then the second two intervals, I will be right on time and see what happens with lactate. So I will measure lactate with this little device. It's called a lactate uh, Pro 2. In this case, it's a, it's a second version with those uh, strips. I will have a little uh, finger prick and then get a little bit of uh, venous blood and measure lactate. I will show you how that works. And then also I have this very nice device. Um, it's called a uh, NIRS or Near Infrared Spectroscopy uh, measurement device. And what it does, it measures the amount of oxygen that is in the tissue. So the amount, let's say, of oxygenated hemoglobin at a local level, in this case, I will do it around my uh, thigh. As you can see, I strapped it around my thigh. Um, so I target the vastus lateralis. You can see that it's this muscle. Um, yeah, it's one of the quadriceps muscles. So to set up the device, I put measure, then free training. I will take the upper thigh and also perform that's not super important. It detected my device and now it has to calibrate. Stand still for a short moment. And now it measures my oxygenation of my thigh, which is 58. So around 58% of all tissue is oxygenated. That makes sense because it's always a pooling of arterial and uh, venous blood. So the, the muscle is an active tissue. It's constantly using oxygen, of course. So you'll see how that graph changes when I'm doing the intervals and how this can also uh, yeah, tell me a bit more about my threshold and so forth. Let's first start with the baseline lactate measurements before I did any warm up or any intervals. So how does that work? You start with a little prick. I will show you here in the finger. There should come some blood, it depends a little bit. You see a nice little drop of blood. Then I will take this chip. All right. Just one more before I start. And then I just take up a little bit of blood wait 10 seconds and it will give me a quite a low value in millimolars per liter which is 1.4 so we write that down this will be my baseline uh, value of lactate all right after a nice little warm-up i'm ready to go 285 watts for four minutes let's go First interval done, let's take some like this. That was definitely above my threshold. Let's see, I'm guessing at least 10. That was hard. Still one minute 30 of rest. All right, 12, 12.4, 12 that's very high. Let's rest a bit. All right, one more interval here, this set. I tried to get to 285 average, it will be very hard. I feel pretty fatigued already. Okay, let's go. All right, 
Let's take some like this. A little prick. That's definitely above my threshold. Let's see what oxygenation says. But you'll see a steep decline, uh, most definitely. All right, measuring lactate after the second one, second interval. All right, 15.9, that's obviously very high. Means that I push my anaerobic reserve as well. Let's rest a minute or 30 minutes and do it again, but at a lower, lower total watts. So around my threshold, 230, 225, and see what happens with oxygenation and as well like that. All right, I rested now. 30 minutes, let's see if my lactate already came down again. Um, I'm sure it would, to a certain extent at least. I'm, I'm actually guessing the same amount. A nice little prick. Good, so let's see where we at. Should be low. I've been resting, walking around a little bit. Yeah, 3.3, so almost baseline. If I start warming up now, you'll see that, um, yeah, it will go down again a little bit because when you do exercise, of course, the low uh, threshold, actually the type one fibers, so the slow twitch fibers in your, in your muscles, uh, oxygenate and, and, and um, use lactate, or at least burn the lactate to provide energy, right? So it will actually suck away some of the lactate that is still circulating. Good, so let's warm up and go again with the two intervals that are a bit slower at my threshold pace. Let's see. All right, let's go after it again. First interval, average 235 watts. Should be more comfortable pace, but still uh, pretty annoying for four minutes. Let's go. All right, second, sorry, first interval of the second uh, set has been done. Let's measure lactate. You can hear I'm breathing much less excessive. This means that I have to buffer less CO2 and therefore I have been tapping less into my anaerobic capacity, that's clear. Um, so lactate should be lower. It was also much more comfortable, the pace, um, to, to row on. So let's see how we are. Should be, I don't know, maybe five, five or six. All right, nice one, sorry, 4.6. All right, so that's a lot more within the normal ranges of a threshold and not in an exponential increase phase of your lactate. Let's rest one more minute and then do the last set and keep that lactate at in check. All right, let's go for one last interval. 235 watts on average. Should be uh, manageable, should be feasible. Let's go. All right, here I am again. Uh, after the last interval, you see again, I'm breathing less hard. It actually was quite comfortable, easily doable. On average, 231 watts. So let's see what the lactate says. I think it's gonna be a bit lower, maybe even uh, feel pretty comfortable. So I'm really ar around my threshold. Yeah, 4.3, so exactly where I should be. You see, this way of training is much better, right? I can do four, even five sets or five times four minutes with two minutes break at this pace 
so I can build in much more intensity and much more volume as well. Instead of just going super hard, exploding completely and barely hold on even for two sets. All right, let's have a look at the data. First, I'll show you the power output. As you know, I tried to reach 285 watts the first two intervals. Although I managed the first interval, I actually did not manage the second interval because simply it was too high of an energy expenditure and I could not hold on to uh, those uh, watts. I'll show you in a second why this actually was. So first interval 285 watts, second 277 watts. Then obviously after this long period of uh, rest, I could easily hold on to 235 and 233 watts for the third and the, and the fourth interval. It gets more interesting if we look at lactate. So I started off with a baseline value of 1.4, which is very normal. I'm, I'm talking about milliliter per uh, liter. And then it shoots up after the first interval to 12.4. This is a very uh, strong increase and already indicates that I'm tapping into my anaerobic reserves. Then a short drop and after the rest, and then it shoots up even more to 15.9, uh, which is obviously a very high value. Then um, after 30 minutes of rest, you can clearly see that um, it's still a little bit bo uh, above a baseline, so 3.3, and then it doesn't shoot up uh, as much anymore, which is expected because my, my lactate curve is much less in the in exponential phase here. I am close to my aerobic uh, threshold, this mean, or my ventilatory threshold, so this means that I can actually uh, oxidate the lactate that I produce. And you can see here from uh, going from interval three to interval four, there's actually no increase, even decrease in lactate uh, measurements. And this is exactly the problem what, what happens in many uh, novice athletes or, or people who don't really know how to do interval training. They go off too hard, they are in this high lactate zone, as, as you can see what I also did in the beginning, and then their power output drops off completely in the latter uh, two sets. Even when they try, they can never reach uh, that intensity anymore. So secondary, I also want to talk about the muscle oxygenation, because this data is always nice in relation to interval training. As you can see from my data here, it goes down quickly when I start doing the interval training and then stays at a lower oxygenation during the four minute interval, even grinding down slightly because the muscle extracts so much oxygen, actually more than it can uh, deliver. Then it shoots up. Why does it shoot up after resting or during the resting? Is because I stop contracting the muscles, but the heart obviously keeps pumping oxygenated blood into the tissues, into the muscle. And this repeats itself during the intervals. I haven't shown it here, but you also have uh, interval uh, three and four, where you have a slightly lower decrease in muscle oxygenation during the intervals. How is this? Uh, data applicable. For example, what you can, can do at home with, with wearables such as NIRS is doing, for example, a maximal exercise test to exhaustion or a 511 uh, test. What is that actually? It is five minutes on where you work for five minutes at a, a low, medium, higher and maximal um, pace, for example, on the bike or on the rower. And then you always have one minute rest to recover the oxygenation and also the, the total hemoglobin. And you can see it here, uh, I, I've done it. In the beginning, the oxygenation stays flat or grinds slowly down during the more intense uh, sets, so in the middle, but at the end, it exponentially goes down. You can see it in the latter two intervals here. And this is probably also the point, the breaking point, we call this, where the muscle exponentially extracts more oxygen than it can actually deliver, and this will correspond to the point of your ventilatory threshold or your maximal lactate steady state, approximately. These are uh, rough numbers. There's uh, some, some debate about this in the literature. All right, I really hope you liked the video. If there's something you have to take away from this video is that you cannot start your interval sessions or your interval sets at a too high pace, and a good way to measure or to assess your pacing would be a 20 minute all out test on the rover. And then you take 90% of that average value of the pace of the watts. And you can go from there during intervals, for example, four minute, five minute intervals. That's always a good uh, baseline. You can use NIRS as well as lactate to, to pinpoint and to even improve your uh, interval training. Give this video a like and a subscribe as this really helps out our channel. This is the first video of, of the, the What Size channel. And if you have any further questions, just put them in the comments below and we will uh, definitely review them and answer them. All right, for me, that was it. Hope you liked it. 
See you soon. Until the next video. Ciao.